In this video, we'll discuss the Lorentz transformations, and this is the belongs to the topic of the special theory of relativity. In our previous videos, we we studied, we learned that the time between two observers, one observer is at stress and the other is moving. We learned that the their the time measured are different, and we call that as the length and the time dilation. So there must be a difference in time between two observers. So if the time dilate, then the length must be contracted also. The measured length must be contracted. We call this as the length, the, the relativity of length or the length contraction. So uh, in other words, because of that, when the particle travels with a high speed velocity, which is very close to the speed of light, then the Galilean transformation equations must be revised. Okay? And the revision is called as the Lorentz transformation. So it is now more, the Lorentz transformation is more general. It's because that it can be used in the uh, velocity of the moving, moving frame. So in this video, we will derive the uh, Lorentz coordinate transformation, transformation equations, and we have also, we will also derive the Lorentz velocity transformation equations, and we will solve some problems related to this topic. Okay, now consider again the observer in the rest frame, and call this as S frame in the rest frame. So we have the space-time coordinate as the coordinate of is is x, y, z, t. So x, y, z are the three-dimensional axes, and we have the time at that point. So this is at zero zero. Okay. Now another observer in the moving frame, we call this as the is prime frame, and it has a velocity of u, and this u is relative to the rest frame. Okay, so then uh, the distance from the rest frame to the point, the location of the moving frame, we call this as the product of the velocity times t from the uh, kinematics of s is equal to velocity times time, and the velocity is u. And the time of travel. So this, therefore, this time must be the time as measured from the rest frame. Okay, so we have this distance. Now again, this is the from S frame. S prime. This is a moving frame. So it has the coordinate of uh, x prime, y prime, z prime, and t prime in the S prime uh, frame. Now, any particle inside the moving frame, its distance called as x prime because this is the coordinate now since the particle is moving only in one dimension then uh, the y here is zero and we have this z is also zero there's no uh, or the same the y and z did not change its value okay so then uh, the distance of that particle inside that frame is actually called as x and this is the distance as measured from the rest frame now if this velocity of the moving frame is very much less than compared to speed of light then we can say that time must be the same the time in the rest frame and the time in the moving frame have different I'll have the same answer so they must be equal for non relativistic so in that case we can now say that the, uh, the total distance or the distance of the particle inside the moving frame is now the sum of u, t, and x prime. Okay? So it's just an algebraic sum. The u, t, the u again means the velocity of the moving frame according to the rest frame times the time, elapsed time, from which means that at zero time, time is equal to zero, this frame coincide the coordinate of the or the origin of the is frame so at least as it travels uh, at a certain time t then the distance must be u times t 
So therefore, the any distance measured of the particle inside the moving, moving frame should be what? The sum of this ut times dx prime. So therefore, this is actually the total distance, but this is in purely Galilean coordinate transformation equation. Okay? So, this is applicable only. It's because the TU is much less than to the speed of light. Okay? Now, if the if U is approaches C, take note that it is now relativistic, then we cannot say that T are equal. They are not equal practically. Instead, the time interval as measured from the rest frame is greater than the proper time. The proper time is the time measured in the rest frame where uh, we are measuring the distance. So the proper time, remember, we call it as proper time because there is no change between two events. There is no change in position between two events based on the observer inside. So we call this as the proper time. And it is always less than to the inter time interval between two events. So in that case, if you are asked how much uh, distance traveled by, uh, by the particle inside this moving frame, it is not equal to ut plus x prime alone. Okay? Why? But take note that the time, we have the time deletion. So therefore, this must be, there must be a length contraction. So in that case, in order to compensate the uh, time deletion, we have to apply the length contraction principle. So we need to multiply this with square root, square root of 1 minus u squared over c squared for the Lorentz transformation because this is now the length contraction. And the length contraction is the proper time in our previous video. The length, the, the proper length multiplied by multiplied by what? Uh, or divided by the Lorentz, fa Lorentz factor. The Lorentz factor, remember, is 1 over square root of 1 minus u squared over c squared. So therefore, uh, the more general uh, answer to this question, how far is the particle inside a moving frame, away from the rest frame, then we can say that it is ut plus x prime, and we have to multiply the 1 uh, minus u squared over c squared. Okay? So this is now a more general coordinate. So is this applicable for the Galilean? The answer is yes. If this is u is much less than to c, this term becomes 0. So the square root of 0, the square root of 1 is 1. So in, in that case, we go back to the transformation of the Galilean. So therefore, uh, this is general. This one cannot be applied to the relativistic motion. Okay. So, we call this as the Lorentz transformation. Now, aside from answering what is x, we need to know how much is the x prime related to x. Take note that x prime is the uh, proper length. And we will relate the proper length or x prime to the uh, length interval between two events. Okay? And aside from that, we need also to relate the t prime to the time measured in the rest frame with the u and we have the uh, or the velocity of the moving frame and the speed of light relationship. So to do it is we need to solve for transform this one and solve for the x prime. So to do it is transpose this ut to the left side becomes what? x minus ut is equal to x prime then square root of 1 minus u squared over c squared. Then with that, uh, because we want to solve for, for what? For x prime, so we have to divide both sides by this amount, square root of 1 minus u squared over c squared. And this will result as x minus ut divided by square root of 1 minus u squared over c squared. So dividing both sides by this amount, both sides will be cancelled out, becomes x prime, and this one must be divided by the square root of 1 minus u squared over c squared. So therefore, this is now actually uh, the answer. What is x prime in terms of what? In terms of 
uh, x ut okay so therefore we can always find the proper length if we have the length and the time combination so we have the time and length combination okay now uh, in the principle of special theory of relativity uh, the transformation from the uh, frame S frame to S prime must be identical to the transformation of S prime to S which means that if we transform for example this one uh, this one is the the transformation from from S to S prime so therefore we can always solve for the value of X prime using this formula because we can use this transformation transforming from S to S prime now if we transform if you reverse the tra uh, transformation meaning if we have the the S prime S to S prime transformation must be equal to uh, S prime to S it must be it must be identical okay so how to do it now in order to do it we have to take the additive inverse of u what does it mean which means that i will change the sign of u because this is positive so i will change this to negative okay and it's also changing this to negative but take note that if you have this negative u when you square it the result becomes positive so negative u times negative u is positive u squared so therefore this will remain as as is but this one this will be negative okay now we want to transform that to to another frame so therefore the the result becomes what this is now take note this is is prime to is so is to is prime must be what is prime x prime is equal to u negative u because this is positive so remember additive inverse of u so change the you and this will becomes now the uh, time in the is prime this must be t prime because we we transform the the what the is prime to is so therefore we have also take note this is negative okay and this one because this is x prime this will becomes x so this is now the relation of the x prime using the principle of the identical transformation based on the relativity or uh, relativity special theory of relativity so therefore in, in this case we have two values of the x prime so mathematically we can equate this two equating this two will provide this result take note we equate this we cannot so therefore this one is actually we have negative take note and we have this one as x minus ut over square root of 1 minus u squared over c squared so, okay now notice that uh, because we want to solve for t prime we have already the values of x prime we need to have the t prime so solving for t prime transpose this term to the left side becomes plus ut and this one becomes minus okay this term becomes minus uh, this will be subtracted by this amount so it should be negative x minus u t divided by square root of 1 minus u squared over c squared okay this is it so transpose this one to the left side now divide both sides oh by the way we can we can because this uh, we have the we have two fractions so we have to combine this term so take the lcd the lcd is square root of 1 minus u squared over c squared so in that case lcd divide this is one so we will we will multiply this term with this one so we the radical symbol will will be eliminated so leaving us x quantity 1 minus u squared over c squared so this one uh, again this is the result after multiplying this two then minus lcd divide this denominator uh, the result is purely x minus ut so we have this as the grouping symbol okay we have we have, we have uh, combined we combine the two fractions so with that 
uh, remove the grouping symbol so by distribute distribute is 1 x minus 1 x minus u squared over c squared remove the grouping symbol then this is the result okay now we can notice that x must be eliminated so therefore we have only one at at ma uh, play uh put this in the first term so that there's no negative in the first term so we have ut minus x u squared over c squared all over 1 minus u squared over c squared okay solving 40 so we need to divide this both sides by u so after dividing u this u will be cancelled out and this is u squared becomes u so we have now t prime is equal to t minus ux okay ux or x u divided by c squared all over square root of 1 minus u squared over c squared so we have we have now the relationship of the t prime in terms of t u and the displacement so meaning if, if given the parameters then we are asked to solve for the proper time then we have to use the Lorentz transformation we cannot use we cannot solve the time deletion with that because we are given with the position so it's good to use the Lorentz transformation this is part of the Lorentz transformation okay so in terms of the Lorentz factor so we have now the t prime becomes the uh, gamma okay or the Lorentz factor t minus ux over c squared this is the simplest form compared to this one but the two are the same okay so the transformation of t prime the t prime trans transformation okay so then let us summarize the results no oh by the way we have this x prime take note do what this x prime to be x minus ut over square root this is uh the derived formula in our previous slide so we are able to obtain that so in terms of the Lorentz factor then we have the Lorentz factor x prime is Lorentz factor is multiplied by x minus ut and the time prime t prime is now we derive again this one we already have this derivation of this so we have t prime is equal to t minus ux over c squared all all over the square root of 1 minus c squared over c squared or in terms of the Lorentz factor t prime is the Lorentz factor quantity t minus ux over c squared so th we, these are the two uh, transformations uh, we derived in our previous slide okay now question what is x because if we have this x prime we need to relate this one uh, in terms of x also with we need also to have this relationship t in terms of t prime x prime this one this must be expressed in terms of x prime and t prime also okay so how again uh, recall again that the trans to transform from s prime to s we need to change the algebraic sign of the speed of the moving frame u vice versa vice versa it's because that from 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 this one we can tra go back to x prime so very simple to do it just change the sign of u that's it okay so let's do it look at this one so we need to transform this one because this is is prime transformation we will transform that to is frame so to do it is okay we have this uh, gamma okay then we have look at i think this we will use this one so this will now becomes x this will becomes x and this one must be x prime okay then change this to negative u and this will become t prime change this to negative u so this will be the result okay x prime becomes x x here becomes x prime minus still minus change the u to negative additive so therefore this will becomes negative and negative becomes plus and take note this we need to transfer also this will becomes t prime that's it uh we already transform the s prime to from um, from s prime to s 
then all over 1 minus u squared okay this is negative but when you square it this is the same as u so nothing will change in the inside the radical but this one becomes plus okay so this is the coordinate transformation of the x from x prime where the prime is prime to to is transformation okay so then what about t so in t you can again use this principle because this is the principle applied by the special theory of relativity now all you need to do is to change the sign of u so this t prime becomes t this one becomes t prime this will be changed by a negative so negative and negative becomes plus and this must be x prime also then change is negative again but when you square it the same so by the way this is in terms uh, this one in terms of the Lorentz factor becomes the Lorentz factor x prime minus c u t prime so they are equal so again we have this from t prime to t t to t prime change negative okay and this will becomes x prime and this is negative u square root the same so therefore this is the transformation t transformation from t prime to t or from s prime to s prime okay so uh, these are the Lorentz transformations in terms of the Lorentz factor then we have this as the result so t prime plus u x prime over c squared now what about the velocity transformation because we have the coordinate transformation we need to have the velocity transformation equations so how to derive the velocity now the derivation of velocity transformation is coming from this two results which we derived in our previous slide so x prime in terms of the Lorentz factor and t prime in terms of the Lorentz factor also now all you need to do is to differentiate this take the derivative of the position with respect to time in order to produce velocity take note of that so therefore we have d dt of x prime is equal to the Lorentz factor x minus ut so apply the sum rule okay or implicit differentiation then we have the uh, dx prime over dt and this will be because because Lorentz factor is a constant so we can move it out then we have this derivative so we have, we can use the sum rule okay so derivative of x becomes dx over dt the derivative of ut is u because this will be first degree so apply the theorem this will simply as u while this one becomes dx over dt so do it so this will becomes d a dx prime over dt and we have the dx over dt okay uh, minus u because the derivative of ut is simply as u okay then solving for take note that we cannot say that this is the velocity because this is the time is different so we can uh, this will becomes b prime only if this is t prime so uh, we will move this uh, dt to the opposite side becomes dx is equal to uh, Lorentz factor quantity dx over dt and u over u, uh, minus u quantity dt this one is already actually take note this is already velocity along x in the frame s but okay now do it the same in the t prime because we have the x prime so in order to produce the velocity in the s prime we need dt prime okay so we will solve dt prime so to find dt prime is the same process we did in the x prime so x prime we take derivative so we, we produce the x prime over dt so this one differentiate with respect to time also differentiate with respect to time now in that case what happened is again using the sum rule of the precision so distribute the the operator derivative operator so this will becomes dt prime over dt take note dt prime over dt because this is with respect to t this is the time that remember in the rest frame and this is the time in the moving frame so they are not equal actually they are not equal 
So, this is not equal to 1. Now, in the right member, take the derivative. The derivative of t, take note, is 1. Okay? Because we will we apply the sum rule. So, differentiating t prime becomes dt prime over dt. This one constant is, can move it out. And we have to apply the sum rule inside. So, in this case, this will come up with what? This will come up with uh, 1. Because the, the derivative of t with respect, to, uh, with, with respect to dt is 1, identity. Now, this one, take note that x is not constant. u is constant, c squared is constant. So, therefore, uh, we can move u over c squared outside the derivative becomes dx over dt. Because x cannot be a constant. This is a function of time. So, therefore, this will result dx over dt. That's it. Okay? Now, take note uh, that dt is not related to dt prime. So, we will move this to the left side so that we can solve for dt prime. So, we are, we have now the two complete. Now, in order to provide the velocity in the S prime, we need to divide dx prime with dt prime. So, dividing dx over dt, and this is now the velocity of the particle in the moving frame. dx prime over dt prime. Okay? So, what is dx prime? dx prime, dx prime is this one. No? So, you have to substitute it here, while dt prime is this one. Okay? So, Therefore, dx prime over dt prime is this factor. So, take note that we can cancel the dt. So, the dt will be removed. Okay? And we have also the uh, Lorentz factor will be cancelled. So, we have now... The result is we have dx prime over dt. We have dx over dt minus u all over 1 minus u over c squared dx over dt. Now, what is dx over dt again? And what is dx prime over t prime? This is vx prime, while this one is vx. So this will become vx minus u, all over one minus u over c squared. Instead of dx over dt, this is this is vx. So this is the velocity prime transformation. In order to solve for the velocity prime, what's velocity prime? That is the velocity of the particle inside the moving frame. So, in order to compute for the velocity of the particle inside the moving frame, we need the velocity uh, according to the rest frame. And this is the mov uh, moving velocity, a moving frame, u. And we have this 1 minus u vx over c squared. So, this is the velocity transformation. Okay? So, this is from S prime or S to S prime. Now, in order to produce the... This is, this is take note, B prime, this is from S prime to S prime to S. So, what, what, what about... Oh, this is from S to S prime. So, what about the transformation from S prime to S? So, again, do the same, no? Change the sign of the U. So, Take the additive of this will becomes negative, so negative negative becomes plus. And this one, okay, this is only u, not square. So change this to negative, so negative and negative and negative becomes plus. So therefore, the bx is b squared plus u over one minus u bx over c squared. These are the velocity transformation equations. Okay. So, let us summarize the, the uh, uh, formulas we derived in our previous slide. So, first, we have the x prime. You have to memorize this one. As the Lorentz factor times x minus ut. And we have the t prime. In terms of Lorentz again, a Lorentz factor t minus ut squared, ux squared, ux over c squared. Then, we have the transformation, the is transformation is prime and this is is prime so we can solve for x if we have the x prime so again you have to change this to positive and this is it okay 
Now for T, change this to positive also. So we have the, that's it, as simply as that. So we have now the uh, X prime and we have the X and we have T and the prime and we have T. Now in the Y and Z axis, so there's no change in Y. So whatever value of of, of the S prime will be the same as the uh, Y, the, the, the S prime. So therefore, this means the meaning, if this is zero, this will become zero. This is three, always three. Now in Z also, Z prime, the same. There's no change so far for uh but if 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 the motion is actually non dimension one dim not one dimensional three dimensional then this will uh change but all this this is the pattern you, know? you can pattern this result now in this case the whole duration of our our content we assume that the particle is move for simplicity move along x only such that y and z must be the same there's no difference but there's the difference between the position and we have the time. So that's why we call this as space-time coordinate, space-time motion. So these are the Lorentz coordinate transformations. Now, what about the velocity transformation equations? So we have we derived the bx prime, b prime x, and we have the and it is equivalent to bx minus u, and this is uh, all over one minus u bx over c squared. So you have to memorize this one. And the uh, S transformation, the Vx, you can change this from negative to positive. Okay, and this is from negative or positive to negative. Then negative negative becomes plus, negative negative becomes plus. So therefore, everything will be plus. Which means, look at this one. Very simple to memorize. If you are looking for the prime, the terms must be minus. Okay, subtracted. So it has uh smaller value okay now for for if for frame is frame this will be added by you okay so so these are the by the way the velocity along y along z are the same there's no change in the y component and the z component these are the lorentz velocity transformations equations okay so we we will apply this formula to all motions that are relativistic so the relativistic is a percentage of the percentage of the speed of light so as you move very close to light up to 99.99 percent .99 of the speed of light then it has a relativistic motion so solving problems in motions we will use the Lorentz transformations okay now to apply this problem we need to solve uh, we will solve this problem so the spaceship moving away from earth which has a velocity of 0.9 C so this is 90% the spaceship is moving at the 90% of the speed of light fires and it fires no at the same time the spaceship fires a robot space probe the same direction as is in motion and this velocity is 70 percent the speed of light so the spaceship is moving from earth and the spaceship delivers or eject the uh, robot space probe so and take note that the velocity is close to speed of light so therefore there must be a relativistic in that case the question is what what is the probes take note this robot space probe what is the probes velocity relative to earth okay and letter b uh, a scout ship oh, by the way this is the scout uh, ship is sent to catch the to catch the what uh spaceship so there must be another uh, object is moving and this is actually traveling at the near to the speed of light as the point ninety five of or the ninety five percent of the uh, speed of light relative to the earth 
the question is what is the velocity of that scout relative to the spaceship okay so let's solve first letter a so letter a we have this earth and this is take note risk frame so therefore the scout ship or the spaceship is moving away from the surface of the earth at a velocity of what at a velocity of 0.90 and we have the space probe and this is moving moving what moving 0.7 okay so 0.7 of the speed of light 0.7 c or the 70 percent so this is moving and this is releasing the space probe so therefore this velocity u is the velocity of the spaceship relative to earth and this 70% or the 0.7c is the velocity of the probe relative to the spaceship. So the question is, what is the probe's velocity relative to Earth? Okay? So this question again belongs to the Lorentz transformation. Why? Because it involves the it involves the motion which is relativistic. Okay? Now the given are velocities of the two particles and you are asked to solve for the velocity of the probe so therefore we have to use the velocity transformation equation so to answer is letter a you have to use this one because this is the is transformation so using the given in the problem then we can use the we can solve for the bx so the question is what is the velocity relative to earth so it must be vx so this will be our task to solve how to solve for vx then use our formula derived vx because this is take note that we are solving the is so this must be plus okay so easy to remember so b prime x plus u all over one plus u vx over c squared now what is vx u is remember is we understand u is 0.9 because it is the velocity of the species now vx take note this is the velocity relative to the spaceship so this must be what given as 0.7 so then substitute substitute everything now take note that the c will be cancelled so this will be simply as 1 plus 0.9 times 0.7 then you have to add this one so it should be in terms of c and the velocity is 0.982c or 98.2% of the speed of light. This will be the answer. So, that is the velocity of the probe and that the transformation from the earth surface. So, it should be the velocity relative to the earth is 98.2c. Okay. Now, in letter B, by the way, since uh, we have this one and we have the we have the scout no by the way i forgot to include the uh, drawing here there must be another object here and this is the what scout no this is the scout scout ship and it has a velocity of what this have the velocity of point 0.95 okay of c now, uh, this is to follow up, no? To follow up. Now, the question is, okay, a scout ship is sent to catch the spaceship, so to catch up the spaceship by traveling speed of, it must, it must be greater, no? And this is 95% speed of light. So, 0.95 uh, relative to Earth. So, this actually measured based on Earth principle. Okay, then... Uh, what is the velocity of the scout ship? What is the velocity relative to the spaceship? So you are now asked what is the velocity as observed by the observer inside the spaceship. So in that case, in order to solve for that problem, we need B prime because it's take note this is moving. Although this is moving, but we are we are measuring. How much is the velocity relative to what? Relative to the spaceship. And take note, this velocity 
is the velocity relative to the earth. So we are concerned with the velocity of the scout ship relative to the spaceship. So in order to solve, we have to use the B prime, BX prime, or B prime X. So since this is prime, this will be plus a uh, minus minus. So BX minus U one minus U BX over C squared. Okay, so then substitute the value of u and now what is now your vx your vx is the velocity of the scout relative to earth so then that's it substitute the values then we have the result this is 34.5 percent of c or the 0.345 c speed of light this is the answer to the problem now, last problem. The problem is this is actually a racing, interstellar race. And we have two characters here. We have the Mavis as the pilot. Okay? And he, she crosses the finish line. Finish line. And at that point, uh, by the way, this is moving point C, point 6C relative to, relative to that line. Okay? Now, a hooray message was sent from the back of the from from the back of her ship so we call it as event two and if the event one is actually at the finish line so there is a message for a that travels towards the point where we have the finish line okay then maybe it's measures the length of the spaceship to be 300 so the length of the spaceship is 300 meters stanley is actually at the finish line uh at rest no stanley is in the finish line with witness the crossing point of the uh, maybe spaceship okay so and that is the event one uh, the question is when and where she measures events 1 and 2 to occur. So, when we say when, it should be time. Where, it should be distance. Okay? So, this is the drawing. We have this x, y coordinate. We have, this is the uh, finish line. And that finish line, we have Stanley is standing at that point, so it has the zero coordinate, okay, and this is rest frame, and maybe this is on the spaceship is moving from left towards the finish line, so this is the event one of the problem, and maybe this measured 300, the length of the spaceship, at the end there is a sound hooray, Mrs. Hooray, delivered by crew at event 2 okay at event 2 so uh, okay then uh, the question is when and where Stanley measures the event 1 so if maybe measure the distance to be 300 then how much measured by Stanley okay that's the question okay then uh, which means that the time at time is equal to zero and at the rest frame we have also the time of t prime of the mavis the same queen side no the final time of the the time of at the origin it has what it has t which is the time measured by by Stanley, the same as the time measured by Mavis, which is equal to zero. And since the length of the spaceship is towards slip from the finish line, so this must be a negative, negative distance. Okay? Because it is a process towards the finish line. So we can use negative here. And the speed of the spaceship take note is 60% or 0.60. And this is event one. And we have this event two. So, how to answer this problem? So, to answer this problem is we need the transformation. X coordinate transformation. 
of its frame. Okay, because the question is talking about Stanley. So it should be its frame. So, recall the formula. Plus, take note, this is minus because this is square root. As is. So, the question is what is x prime and what is t prime? Take note that our our focus point is at the origin. This is where uh, these two intersect. The, the moving frame and the rest frame intersect at this point. So, x prime is the time or the, or the distance measured by Mavis and that is negative. Again, negative because it is the left side of the uh, left, left side of the x-axis or negative x-axis then what else the time what is t t prime t prime remember at the origin is the same as t and u take note is u is point c so again t prime is equal to t and this is equal to zero so at time is equal to zero the t prime and t must be the same so substituting these values to this formula then we come up with this one negative 300.60 all over 1 minus u squared and it should be 0.6c squared c squared then calculate this is negative 375 okay so in other word we have if 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 maybe it measures the length of the spaceship as negative 300 then what Stanley measures negative 375 so there was a delay of the sound actually there was a delay of the sound heard is actually uh, as the crossing point here a finish line then then maybe heard the hurry at a distance of 300 but what Stanley heard the sound at a distance of 375 which means that the sound was received before it was sent okay the sound was heard before it was sent okay so uh, this is the answer this is the answer of where does the measure to be so the toy bins was measured by the rest frame to be negative 375 okay then the time is this is again in the rest frame so we have t t prime plus u x prime the square root of 1 minus u squared over c squared. Then substitute the values. Again, we have t is equal to 0, u is 0 0.6, and x is negative 300 again. Substitute the values, then we have this as a negative time. So, negative signifies that the sounds was here, was heard before it was sent. Okay? So, we cannot arrive negative t in... in in Galilean transformation but in relativistic there is a possibility of having a negative time and this is the situations wherein we can say that the time is negative okay so that's it and this is negative 0.75 of microseconds so that's all thank you for listening